Hello everyone, it's March week one and the prompt this month in the Facebook group is flowers, florals and leaves and you can interpret this in any way you like so put your thinking caps on. Now I've decided I want to do something on book pages today so I've pulled out um, a variety here, I probably won't use all of these. I've got some Asian book paper, some music paper, um, a piece from The Tempest, I do believe this is from um, an Edwardian um, diary of an English lady or whatever it's called um, and this is a page from Daphne's diary um, somebody requested the other day when I announced that I'd be doing the Daphne's diary um, series can I do something with the fonts so I thought aha that gave me um, an idea so let me get some supplies together and I'll be straight back I want to start off with the page from Daphne's diary and I've just got myself a regular pencil and I find that one of the easiest flowers in the world to draw is um, a cone flower so all I'm going to do is draw my basic um, outline so we have sort of a bit of a, a curve like this it's such um, an easy thing to to draw and then we want some um, petals and I'm just going to be really loose about this Flowers are not perfect, so your cone flower doesn't have to be um, either. Um, and then we can come in perhaps from, from this angle as well. And I don't know whether you can see um, that basic design. I also at this stage want to draw my stem as well. And the good thing about doing this in pencil is that, you know, if it all goes horribly wrong, you can rub it out and, and start again. Now I'm going to paint my cone flower in watercolour paints. So let's use some of this colour here. What colour um, is this one? It is called Violet Red. This is a set by Mei Lang. This is just um, a budget watercolour set. It's absolutely beautiful. So I'm just going to really um, water, water this down. Um, what else do I want to use? I think I'm going to start off with that so far, but I'm thinking I might pull in some gouache um, in a little while as well. So let me just put this here so that you can see the colour that um, I'm using. I've also got um, a jar of water as well. Um, hang on, I need um, a, a paper towel. Oh my gosh, I've never painted on book paper before, so um, keep your fingers crossed. I'm going to try and keep this um, really, really loose. So let's just paint in these petals. And we can darken them later um, if we if we need to. But I'm just going to follow initially my my pencil pencil lines, adding a bit of darkness in here. They tend to be darker, sort of at the at the tip here. So let's add a bit more pigment pigment um, as we as we go um, along. What a pretty pretty colour. So I'm just tapping on a bit more pigment um, just at the edges, edges here. If you don't feel um, confident painting and drawing flowers and you want to give this a try, um, think about pulling out your stamps and your stencils. You know, nobody says that you have to draw them. Creative license and, and all that. Do whatever suits you. I know that, you know, we are all at different levels on our creative journey and that's absolutely fine. If you don't feel comfortable with something, um, don't do it. Although I would always encourage you to give things um, a try. Let me twist my paper as well. Um, twist and turn your paper if that's easier, easier for you. Again, just uh, tapping on some of the colour in the centre where it would naturally be, be darker. Of course, I could always bring in um, another colour and I think I'm going to bring in some of the um, deep violet. So I'm just going to put some of that on my palette as well. So here we go. Here's the deep, deep violet. And we can mix some of the pink into that um, as well. In fact, here we go. If we do it this way, this way around, then we've got the, the two colours. Let's add a bit more, a bit more of that. So let's try and mix it. Let me just um, get some of that um, colour off my um, ferrule. And I'm just going to tap in some of this as well. Just trying to create um, interest in my in my flower.
and it's still a little bit wet as well so you know these colours are going to mingle together um, hopefully. Let me twist it um, again just because that's um, easier, easier for me. Oh you see I've um, smudged it here but that's okay we can use that to, to our ad advantage perhaps. And I like how that looks. Now I've pulled out some um, oranges and reds and a bit of yellow ochre as well. And I'm just going to tip um, some of these into my flower as well. Let's just try and outline this here. You see, that is the most gorgeous colour, absolutely beautiful. And I want to bring in a bit of the orange colour as well. That's just lovely. Not too much water. I don't want it to be um, too, too wet, but I'm just tapping, tapping this on. And then perhaps some of the yellow, yellow ochre in there as well. Just trying to add interest into my flower and next I want to do the stem of my flower and I think I want to use some of the um, yellow the the olive green one two three four five one two three four five this color this color here I'm just going to use this straight from the palette and again I'm just going to turn my page just because um, that will be easier for me to to use let me just tap off some some of that paint And I'm just going to draw in my stem. And I'm using a much smaller paintbrush as well for this. Isn't that a beautiful colour? These colours are just so vibrant. Add a bit more, a bit more paint, a tiny bit more water um, as well. Let's just um, dab it off on my on my palette, and I'm just going to keep playing with them um, with this. You see, that's much um, much darker. That's okay though, because that um, just adds some really nice uh, contrast. Let's try and make it a bit darker at the at the top. My painting is now dry and I've just given it um, a quick um, iron as well because it was um, rather on the wrinkly side. And I'm going to use a Derwent charcoal pencil. This is in the colour dark just to try and grunge it up a bit and I'm just going to try and add a really thin layer just around the outside of my petals and just to try and define them and break them um, up a bit as well. I might even come in with a with a little bit um, of white ink as well but just trying to keep this really nice and um, and soft with the charcoal charcoal pencil and I'm not pressing hard on this at all went a bit hard there but that's uh, that's okay turning my paper around just because it's easier for me to work in that way and I can do the same around the top of the comb flower and perhaps add a bit more of the dark along this edge here as well and I'm just going to use a thin blending stump just to blend blend this out and just smudge that charcoal can you see what a difference that's um that's making. You'll see it here probably where I've um, put on that um, that heavier heavier layer. Just makes it look a little bit more grungy. So you can see I've just darkened um, some of the edges. I do want to just go around this now, just with um, my Muji pen. So I'm just going to go just to add some. 
more scribbly lines just mainly just to the edges and this is just such a fine pen this is a Japanese um, Muji Muji pen it's a gel pen so I don't think um, it's permanent um, but I just like the fact that it's just so so fine just look how fine that nib is and so we can just add sort of a whimsical touch to this we could even have some scribbly lines here in the center if we wanted to but just trying to you know get a really whimsical scribbly touch to this i'll show you a close-up in a in a second so i'm starting to get really loose and scribbly about this now and because it's so fine it's not overpowering and overtaking my flower just adding a really pretty whimsical touch we can do the same around here if we want to as well and then we can just add some scribbly lines down the center like like this Don't overthink it. I think that's the thing. I think, you know, and the more you do it, the more you start to um, loosen, loosen up. And we can add some scribbly lines along the outside here as well. Perhaps just on, on one side. And if I want to add a touch more detail, I could um, come in with a jelly roll pen. This is the really fine one. You can see that I'm just adding a few scribbly lines here and there as well. I don't want to overdo it and um, and add too much, but because this is so fine, this is just really easy just to add just a touch of something else just to brighten up um, whatever it is you're, you're doing. And we can just few scribbles, nothing major, just really light about this. Contrast really well with the black. Tilting my page, as I've said, just because that's um, easier, easier for me just to control my page. And yeah, that was the right thing to do. I really like how that um, that that looks. Let's try another one. This time I'm just going to use some of this Japanese paper. Now I'm using a really cheap paintbrush that came in a set from the pound shop. Um, I've put some blues onto my palette this time. Let's just dip the brush into some water and just load it with some paint. I think this is ultramarine blue and all I'm going to do is just put my paintbrush down and then I am just going to finish off my petals like like this again just twisting my paper round filling it in might need some more um, paint actually let's just put a little bit more down on the palette haven't got uh, quite enough just pressing that there and then just finishing it off just on the pointy end of the of the brush it doesn't get any easier than this and we've got room for for one more so we'll have one here and just finish that off as well that looks so pretty I love that let's try and do another one over here as well let's hope that I don't um, screw screw this up let's start here Perhaps should have done a slightly different shade of blue but there we go I didn't this is just a great way as well to um, practice playing around with with watercolors if you're not confident with them like um, like I'm not um, my whole aim this year is to to get better and spend more time playing with these materials that I've got an abundance of and you know learn them properly now I can add some pink to the centre of my, my flowers. I'm just going to tap, tap this on and just perhaps draw myself some lines like this. Just being careful that I don't um, make a, 
and make a mess of this. Do I like that? I think I do. Maybe a bit more, a bit more water. Let's just add a bit more paint just in the, in the centre. Perhaps I want to do the same here as well. Let's add some leaves to this one as well. I'm going to use that same um, sap green, olivey green colour, yellow green, I think it's called. And I'm just going to use a thinner, thinner paintbrush. You can see that I've already drawn my stems on with pencil as well, just in case I made a mistake as to where I wanted them to go. It's easy to rub pencil, pencil out. Um, let's draw on some leaves as well. Now, try not to overthink it too much. I think I want a leaf up here as well, which is going to be obscured by that flower there um, as well. So try not to cover cover that up. And perhaps, in fact, I need to play around with this as well. But you can do, especially with a with a fine paintbrush. Here we are. That's better. And then, where else do I want one? Perhaps one on this side here as well. I'm trying to press down on my paintbrush um, as well hardest thing for me is getting that um, that point and I'm also just adding some of the, more of the green at the tip of my my leaf just so that we've got some contrast You can see I've added um, another leaf here. I've also um, reactivated some of the yellow ochre as well because I'm just going to add a touch of this just for a bit more interest to the centre of my flower. You see that's made all the difference. And it's just a case of playing until you like what you've got. This is what this one looks like now that um, the paint is dry. It's just got the most wonderful feel to it. And for anybody that um, wants to know, it measures approximately six inches by three and a half inches. I also did um, another one as well. And this was a tiny one. I just did one flower and cut it down from the diary of an Edwardian lady. I think I've got the book um, title right. With the same method, so again, using that small makeup brush I'm just looking for it here it is so this was just um, a cheap set of um, makeup brushes from the pound shop I think it came in a set of about four or five um, so you know really accessible to absolutely everyone but how cute is that so I have now got um, three pieces of book page ephemera that I can add to my journals and um, this one here will go in my Daphne's diary journal I love how that one has turned out but I do like these um, as well I think that one is absolutely beautiful I haven't doodled um, around either of these I don't think I will with this one here I may change my mind on this one I'm thinking that I will probably um, turn this one into um, a mini tag and um, put it in my um, usual scraps journal so just to recap, the prompt for this week is flowers, florals and leaves. And you can interpret this in any way you like. You can paint them, you could collage them. You can use real flowers and leaves if you want to as well. Um, of course, don't forget to go and check out Kylie's video this week and see what she's been up to, as no doubt she's done something completely different to me. I'll leave the link to Kylie's video in the description box below. And for anybody that wants to follow along with our um, prompts and challenges, I'll leave the link to the Facebook group the mixed media emporium in the description box below so if you've enjoyed my video today and it's given you some ideas as always i would really appreciate a thumbs up do let me know what you think in the comments below but most importantly thanks for watching take care everyone and i'll see you all again soon bye for now